Good evening, friends. Contrast enhanced MR angiography, a challenge or an opportunity? In fact, non invasive vascular imaging has been routinely performed using Doppler and conventional non contrast angiography. The inherent limitations of these techniques are known to everyone. And uh, later, CT angiography and contrast enhanced MR angiographies produced excellent images, almost mimicking a conventional DSA images. It is accepted by the clinicians and they are routinely using CT angiographies and contrast enhanced MR angiographies for clinical diagnosis and treatment planning. Unlike CT angiography, the, the image quality of MR angiography depends uh, on a lot of technical factors. So it's, it's a challenge to get an excellent MR angiography image. So at the same time, you have uh, an increased incidence of peripheral vascular disease and you are, you are going to get a lot more reference for MR angiography contrast and lens. So there is an opportunity for a radiologist as well as an entrepreneur. So I would like to share my experience in contrast and MR angiography and most of my studies, all, all the studies are done in uh, uh, an Avento system and I didn't have, I don't have a, a, <coughs> a pressure injector. So uh, these are the non-invasive techniques. I don't have to go through these techniques except by saying that it's, uh, there are new non-contrast MR angiography techniques like already uh, talked by uh, millions uh, the native. But some people are talking about uh, cardiac gator TOF technique which is of course it's not a new technique. It's an old technique but in a new name probably. <coughs> The, the disadvantages of uh, MR angiography is also well known. I don't have to uh, discuss the disadvantages of non-contrast MR angiographies. Now, when you compare the non-contrast MR angiography with contrast enhanced MR angiography, the major advantage of contrast enhanced MR angiography is the short acquisition time. When you have a short acquisition time, you get time to do a large FOV or you can do a high resolution imaging and the inherent image contrast in contrast enhanced MR angiography doesn't depend on flow. So there is no flow related artifacts. <coughs> now to get among this the most important uh, point is the short acquisition time. For this you have to get fast scans. Now why fast scans? One is it reduces the scan time. When you have a reduced scan time, you have you can do a high resolution imaging or you can do a large FOV or you can do a multiphasic breath hold studies. So all these are possible if you have a faster system where you can reduce the scan time. And when you reduce the scan time, you can reduce the dose of contrast and you get a better SNR with same contrast. So you can do breath hold studies in a short time. So our aim should be to get a very good scan in a short time. So how do you achieve fast scans? There are hard ways like you achieve a better resolution or better contrast in a high Tesla or you achieve by a parallel imaging technique or with contrast agents. When you inject contrast agents you get better SNR. Anyway, we'll, I'll be going to details of each of these techniques and there are many other techniques that some technical details one should know because the image quality depending on all these factors. So if you know the, 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 the quality, the, the, the factors, how the image quality is modified by these techniques, it is, it is much more easier for you to modify your technique depending on the clinical situation. <coughs> Among hardware, I think uh, it is well known that higher Tesla gives a better SNR and in a high performing gradients you get a shorter TR and TE. And parallel imaging techniques are excellent so that you can combine the elements and you can get uh, faster scans. So if you ask, if you ask me, for a, if, you, if you have a 3 Tesla system without parallel imaging and you have a 1.5 1, 1 Tesla with parallel imaging, I personally prefer a 1.5 with parallel imaging. <coughs> Now you have a paramagnetic contrast agents in contrast and angiography. Why paramagnetic contrast agents? 
in a vascular imaging contrast enhanced vascular imaging the contrast is depending on the T1 contrast so a paramagnetic contrast reduces the T1 so that you get a, a, a contrast and you get a signal so our aim is to reduce the T1 by injecting paramagnetic contrast agents when you reduce the uh, the, the T1 of the uh, blood, the surrounding contrast, the surrounding tissue signals are suppressed, so you get a better SNR. So indirectly, by injecting the dye, you reduce this, you, you can reduce the time, acquisition time. So the idea is, you get a T1 contrast by injecting contrast, contrast, gadolinium contrast, <coughs> and you get an image resolution equal to what you get in a conventional imaging. So there is no question of flow related artifact because the T1 effect is dependent, not dependent on flow. <coughs> now the contrast injection, how do you do the contrast injection? It is well known that the contrast T1 is proportional to the contrast concentration. So in a gadolinium concentration, there is a formula that it is proportional to contrast injection rate divided by cardiac output. So you can increase the contrast dose. So T1 is proportional to the gadolinium concentration. So gadolinium concentration can be improved by increasing the injection rate or reducing the cardiac output. In practical sense, increasing the cardiac rate, reducing the cardiac rate is not possible or not practical. So you increase the injection rate. So what is the injection rate you should use? It depends. So our idea of reducing the T1 is to reduce the T1 of the blood below that of fat. When you do a T1 weighted imaging, T1 of fat has a T1 value in a 1.5, the T1 value of fat is around 270 milliseconds. So our aim is to reduce the T1 value of blood below that of fat and you subtract. So <coughs> if you inject at a rate of say 0.2 to 0.5 ml, you can achieve a T1 of somewhere around 100 milliseconds. So that means you get a very good T1 contrast and you subtract that from the original image and you get a very good angio image. Now question is whether you need to use a mechanical injector or a hand injection. <coughs> we don't have a mechanical injector, injector so I don't know whether if I am right or wrong in saying that hand injection is quite sufficient in clinical use. We routinely use or we use only with hand injection. Because the injection rate is somewhere around 0.2 to 0.5 or 1 ml per second, it can be easily achieved and can be sustained over the scanning time. <coughs> so scanning time, if suppose the scanning time is say around 15 seconds, you need to complete half the scanning time, the injection. That means you have to complete the injection say around in 7 to 8 seconds. So which can be easily achievable by hand injection. So we routinely use a hand injection. <coughs> Now, question is, the other side is the gra which sequence you use, it's the gradient echo sequence because one is the speed, gradient echo sequence uses short TR and to short TE, so the, the time of acquisition is considerably less. Why short uh, TR? Because we can, why, how can you achieve a short TR? Because the stress on the gradient is low because it doesn't use a complete 180 degree RF, so it uses only partial flip. So the stress on the uh, gradient is less, so you get time to do repeat TR. So you can use a short TR and also short T. When you use a short T, you get excellent background suppression and also gradient echo is done in a T1 weighting. <coughs>